Hello, today I'm going to explain some of the programming structures that are used in the first mini project. I wrote a project that's fairly similar to the mini project, but obviously not close enough to give away the answer. So when I find a program, the first thing I'd like to do is run it and see what happens. Well, here it tells us something about a quote code and then it tells us a quote and well okay that does look like a Monty Python quote and yeah I think that it is from Monty Python and the Holy Grail so it does what I said it would do so now let's dig in and see what's actually happening so the code begins by importing modules that it needs and then defining two helper functions namely number to quote and quote to source and they both take one parameter and then the main function called what quote and it also takes one parameter what quote prints that first parameter and then feeds it to number to quote and quote to source and then prints out the results of those functions what quote is called five times and it looks like that's one for each quote that makes sense because you see up here there's five fronts and they look all pretty similar so let's see what actually happens. So the first thing is that the quote parameter is passed to number to quote. So well, what does number to quote do? Well, I say that this function converts the quote code into the associated quote by using an if tree. What does an if tree do? Well, it says that if a value satisfies a condition, the program executes the instructions under the if clause. If the value does not satisfy the condition, it goes on to the next step and checks it versus a different condition and so on and so on and so on until it gets to the else statement. If the else statement is reached, whatever the instructions underneath the else statement are, they are executed. That means that it is a good place to put an error catcher, but a bad place to put a final value. So specifically, this checks the quote number, which is the same value that what quote was called with, against the list of quotes, and it returns the appropriate quote. And that makes sense over here, because we see this quote is plus quote text, and we see, yeah, this quote is, we want a shrubbery with number zero, so zero, we want a shrubbery. So then the next thing that the program does is it calls quote to source. Well, what does quote to source do? I say that this function takes the number code of the quote and returns the production it's from. This form of the if tree is the one that you will want to use to compute the winner of your rock, paper, scissors, lizards, Bach game. I use the or operator to allow the value to satisfy one of two conditions and note that it is very important I say if quote equal equals zero or quote equal equals one I cannot say if quote equal equals zero or equal equal one because Python does not like that so here if the quote is zero or one it tells me that the source is from Holy Grail and yeah, shrubbery is from Holy Grail. And so is it's only a flesh wound. Okay, now that we have the structure of the program down, it's time to get into the interesting stuff. Since we don't allow for user input, your final project should never reach the error messages in the else clause. However, it's still a good idea to check those messages just in case they themselves have an error. My program uses the number 0 to 4. So what do you think would happen if I changed one of the function calls to use 5 instead of 0? It should activate the errors in the else clauses for the first run, but leave the rest of them unchanged. And yeah, that's exactly what happened. You see, it tells me that the error code, I mean the quote code, is 5. And yeah, I probably should have used more descriptive error messages but I was feeling rather silly when I wrote this program. 
Okay, now the really important thing are these lines here that I just uncommented, and I'll change that back. This line is how you will determine the computer's play in your rock, paper, scissors, glitter, Spock game. It creates the variable rand quote and assigns it to the value that the function random.randrange comes up with. The function random.randrange creates a random integer in the range that starts at the first number and goes up to but not including the second number. So the function as it stands now will give me numbers 0 through 4, which is exactly the range of numbers that I want. So then this rand quote is used to call the what quote function. What do you think will happen now when I run the program? It should create a new result that changes every time. And yeah, you see now there's six results. And I have avoided a common error in that my last thing is found by the random value. Some students will forget that the interval in rand range is open, so the second number is never actually reached. I avoid that error. And so now let's see if the first thing changes. And yeah, it does. Okay, now it's one, now it's two, and okay, you get the picture. So what would happen if I started to let it give values that were way too big? It should start throwing those error functions again, and oh yeah, see here, it comes back to that five, and it gives the quotes. And if it gets a different bad number, it still gets the error messages. The more dangerous error, however, is if you make the range too small, say, up to 2. What will happen now when I run the program? I should only see values for 0 and 1. And, yeah, see, I'm hitting run a bunch of times, but I only see 1 and 0 in the answer that should be changing. I hope this video helped you with your project, and good luck in the rest of this class. Thank you for watching.